Hi, this is Matt Stone, and I have 180 degree health. I wanted to talk about repeat a little bit today and fructose. Uh, a lot of you guys think I'm sort of backing off on fructose, putting all my focus on omega-6. For those of you who have read 180 degree metabolism, you will know that that's not true. Fructose got its own dedicated chapter and is a main component of that book in terms of getting in and trying to understand where obesity comes from and um, what are the leading causes? What are the what are the most highly correlated things with obesity? Of course, the consumption of excessive amounts of fruit juice and soda, uh, which is sweetened with uh, high fructose high fructose corn syrup. Which is, you know, there's there's many different versions of high fructose corn syrup, but the typical one is 55 percent fructose. Uh, there's a higher correlation between fructose ingestion from those sources, particularly liquid sources, which does make a difference, um, and obesity in the United States and all across the world. There's very few places in the world where sodas are not consumed, sugar's not consumed, and there's rampant obesity. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Sugar is definitely has a very close connection and very close tie. And I wanted to talk about Ray Pete because there's almost this huge wedge between uh, people at 180 degree health and the people that like 180 degree health, but oh, this guy Ray Pete is is really seems sharp when he's talking about fructose. You know, he consumes ice cream and and lots of orange juice. That sounds good to me. Potatoes aren't as tasty as uh, Haagen Dazs ice cream. I'd much rather eat that than uh, than potatoes or rice or whatever. Um, <clears throat> basically, Ray Pete, from what I've read, and I haven't reviewed his work as thoroughly as I hope to in the future. He looks at fructose, and because fr how fructose is converted and how it's metabolized, he believes that there's an advantage there, an advantage to a sugar molecule such as sucrose, which is 50% glucose, 50% fructose. He thinks that that's really the ultimate carbohydrate, hence the recommendation to drink a lot of orange juice and, and eat uh, lots of foods that are sweetened with sucrose, like haagen ice cream. Um, and those foods are fine on occasion, and uh, I consume those foods every time, you know, every now and again. I'm not a fructose phobe, and I certainly don't eat nothing but potatoes as a carbohydrate source either. I'm just talking about chronic habitual use of large, very large quantities of fructose, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll try to explain basically the wedge between the two of us. But Ray Pete thinks that fructose because it does not stimulate as much of a rise in insulin that it is more satiating than glucose and he feels like fructose in general can be utilized as cellular energy much more easily and readily than glucose and can contribute to raising your metabolism more now Ray Pete is a very intelligent guy and his research has led him to the belief that being hyper metabolic is really the greatest thing that you can do to live a healthy life be free from disease both infectious and chronic and I would agree with that completely um, but I think he's made some major errors with fructose. First of all, fructose, the reason that it is not preferable to glucose is because it does not raise insulin. He thinks insulin, the higher the insulin, the, uh, the greater the, the, the more hunger is created, which is the opposite. You know, if you go and you eat, let's say, a whole pizza until you can barely move, um, your insulin levels peak after that meal and you actually feel quite full, not hungry. Uh, when your insulin levels are lowest or before meals, when you're starving, uh, to think that insulin is a hunger hormone uh, is not totally accurate. Um, let's look at another, another part of that because what's more important than insulin is actually leptin. Uh, Fructose does not raise the hormone leptin. Leptin, again, raises your metabolism, and it decreases your hunger. It raises your sex hormones to optimal levels. Um, it does many, many things that are advantageous. Glucose raises leptin. Fructose does not. Uh, Daniel Lurie, who uh, I communicate with uh, through Russ Ferris's uh, pot belly syndrome, uh, cortisol infection, uh, Yahoo group, which is very interesting, and he passes along a lot of interesting articles. You know, he, he sent me a whole wad of articles, and I've seen plenty of this nature, but he sent some more. Again, 
the difference was basically between fructose and glucose in the study. With fructose, leptin was not raised, and leptin sensitivity was not increased either. Glucose raised leptin sensitivity and raised the hormone leptin. So it's kind of like two strikes against fructose and two major gold stars for glucose when you're talking about appetite regulation, metabolic stimulation, and all that kind of stuff. And so I think Ray Pete really has this backwards. Now fructose, we, we know that triglycerides, a rise in triglycerides in the bloodstream interferes with the function of insulin. Glucose, which is a sugar molecule, is used as glucose. So what you get from starches like potatoes or rice or pasta, a lot of times you hear those called complex carbohydrates. Um, but I'm talking specifically starches that break down mostly to glucose. Um, that is used as glucose. It's not repackaged as a triglyceride in any shape, form, or fashion in the liver. It doesn't, uh, you know, it, it does, you know, a certain percentage will, but it's a small percentage. Whereas fructose, the vast majority of fructose, as well as alcohol, are both uh, go through a process called de novo lipogenesis in the liver, where that type of carbohydrate is converted to triglycerides. Triglycerides rise in the bloodstream and interfere with the function of insulin, which probably has a lot to do with the fact, with the fact that they're cons it's considered a more fattening carbohydrate, and it has a lot to do with the fact that that it, its impact on on leptin, and uh, so. I guess what I'm saying is that I agree 100%, maybe maybe 110% with Ray Pete, that fructose is better than glucose. Um, it's certainly any you know the most cursory glance at any kind of medical literature comparing glucose and fructose definitely gives you the sense that yes, short term glucose causes insulin to rise, but if fructose is triggering triggering insulin resistance. Uh, which is a much more significant problem and leads to insulin levels being beyond normal levels of healthiness, then, uh, you know, you clearly, I don't know, it's just, I've looked at it so thoroughly to think that fructose is preferable to glucose at this point is pretty far-fetched. It would take a lot of convincing to... Uh, somehow reassure me that, that we should be eating haagen ice cream instead of potatoes or yams or beets or turnips or rice or any of those things. So uh, anyway, that's all for, all for me today. I didn't want to think I was uh, getting given a fructose and out-of-jail-free card. And uh, I have the utmost respect for Ray Pete. I think his work on lipids, uh, fats, especially polyunsaturated fatty acid. There I go leaving my phone on again. Um, I think that's really genius work, but that doesn't mean that every single thing that he's come to the conclusion about, uh, such as carbohydrates, is 100% entirely accurate. In fact, I, I can see why he believes uh, because fructose doesn't stimulate insulin, it's a better carbohydrate. 90% of the people in the world believe that fructose is better because it doesn't stimulate insulin, so he's certainly with the rest of the herd on that topic. Um, but I think he's making a mistake, and uh, I know he's had good results, and I believe that you can get away with eating a lot more fructose if you have a higher metabolism and your body's going to burn those triglycerides for fuel. Um, I certainly believe in isolating, isolating those variables, and I certainly believe that you could eat a high fructose diet on if you had very, very low polyunsaturated body fat, uh, cellular content of omega-6 and omega-3 in your cells. So, yes, you might be able to do one or the other. Either one might work. But again, my good sense and, and looking back throughout history and seeing with refined carbohydrates, sugar in particular, the kind of degeneration that was witnessed time and time again, um, it makes consuming a lot of refined sugar in particular a very risky endeavor. And uh, anyway, so that's, that's my stance on that. wanted to clarify that. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health on Ray Pete and fructose.